Today's lesson is on measuring segments, and we're going to start right off. Well, first of all, we'll start with a little definition. A real number that corresponds to a point on a line is called the coordinate of the point. And we have a postulate. Every point on a line can be paired with a real number. That's pretty much the gist of it. So the coordinate of A here is A, and the coordinate of point B is B. And of course, if this were a ruler or a real number line, those would just be numbers like 1, 2, 4, 5, whatever. The real number that corresponds to a point is called the coordinate of the point, as we just said. OK, so now let's talk about the distance. The distance between two points on a line is the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates of the points. So you remember absolute value. So let's say I had the absolute value of 7. That just means what is the distance between this number and 0. So that's 7. But I also know that the absolute value of negative 7 is 7 because negative 7 is also seven units away from zero. So remember, absolute value is always a positive number, never going to be negative. OK, and related to that, then, we talk about the length. The length of a segment is the distance between the endpoints. All right, so let me talk to you just for a second here about notation. So you see how we just have written here, find ST, UV, and SV. So when you see those points and there's no notation on the top of them, that actually means the length. So right here where I have find ST, I'm telling you that is the length of segment ST. So ST with no symbol on top of it means length of ST. This is this notation for length of segment UV, and likewise, that SV there would be the notation for the length of segment SV. This notation is very important and one of the main things that students mess up on early in the year. So take special note of that. Let's do this example now. Find, so we want the length of ST. So we know it's the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. So ST is going to be the absolute value. The coordinate for S is negative 4, and I'm always going to take the difference. And T is 8. So that's the absolute value of negative 12. So the length of ST is 12 units long. All right, how about the length of UV? Well, it's the absolute value of 10 minus 14. So absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. And the length of SV is the absolute value of negative 4. And what's the coordinate for V? 14. So that's going to be the absolute value of negative 18. So SV is 18 units long. So that's how you're going to find the length of a segment when you have the coordinates of the points. OK? If three points are collinear, one point must be between the other two points. OK? Now, of course, if we're talking about a line or even a segment, there are an infinite number of points. But if we only have three of them labeled, and I know that they're all three collinear, then one has to be between the other two. And that leads us to the segment addition postulate that says, if I got these three points, A, B, and C, and they're collinear, and B is between A and C, which we can see here it is, then the segment addition postulate tells me that the length of AB plus the length of BC equals the length of the whole thing, which is AC. That makes perfect sense, right? Okay, so let's see if we got an example over here. Of course we do. All right, so we know that EG, so the length of this whole thing, EG, and remember, remember, don't forget your notation. That means the length of segment, EG, is 59. Then what are EF and FG? Okay, so because of the segment addition postulate, I know that EF plus FG equals EG, 
always a good idea to write your formula first if you got one. So what do I know? Now I'm going to use substitution, right? EF is 8X minus 14. FG is 4X plus 1. EG, they told me, is 59. So now I got a simple linear algebraic equation which is 12x minus 13 equals 59. So 12x is 72, and therefore x is 6, right? Oh, I'm not done though, am I? Got to be sure to answer the question. I want to know what EF and FG are. So EF is 8x minus 14. So that's 8 times 6 minus 14. So that's 48 minus 14, which I believe is 34, right? 34. And that means that FG has to be EG, which is 59, minus EF, which I just found is 34. So FG is 25. I believe that's right. Okay. If two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. We will talk about congruence so, so much in geometry. Not just congruent segments, but congruent triangles, congruent polygons. Just remember that you can't have congruent lines, right? You can't have congruent lines because lines are infinite or congruent planes either. All right, so these two segments here, AB and CD, they're both the same length. This is telling me, this means they're the, the, the lengths are equal. So therefore, I know that they're congruent. And the way that I notate that is I say segment AB is congruent to segment CD. So here is the notation for congruence. Congruent. You'll probably write that maybe 5,000 times over the course of this year. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about distance and midpoint and length a little bit more on a number line. The midpoint. The midpoint is the average or the mean of the coordinates of the endpoints. Okay? So if we look at this right here, if we've got these coordinates A and B and I want the midpoint, I just add those two. So for instance, if A was, I don't know, let's say 6, and if B were 12, I'm just making this up, then I would know that the in the midpoint is 6 plus 12 divided by 2 because it's the average, which would have to be 9, right? Okay, well, what if I have ordered pairs for the coordinates? What if I'm in a coordinate plane? Then I have to have this midpoint formula right here. I have to use the x and y coordinates, so you have to memorize this. Make sure you got a flashcard for it because you'll use this a lot this year too. All right, let's go and see what kind of problems we might find using midpoint. Oh, well, we got to do um, got to do the distance formula. I don't know if you've learned this formula in the past or not, but the distance formula is right here. Another very, very important formula that you have to know. This enables me, if I'm in a coordinate plane, to use the ordered pairs of the coordinates to find the distance. So let's do, here's our little practice problem. So let's just do this right here and it'll let us practice midpoint and distance. Okay, so length, I'm going to use the distance formula, right? So it says find the length. So let's first find the length of AB. And I got to use the distance formula for that. I'm going to write it once. I won't write the formula every time, but you should write it down until you have it memorized. The more you write it, the more quickly you'll memorize it. Okay, now I'm going to substitute. Um, so I'll use, so I'm going to use that for X2. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which one you put first. Like I could put three first or I could put two, negative two first. Why doesn't it matter? Because I'm going to square it. So I'll always have a positive number under my radical because I can't take the square root of a negative number, right? So this is going to be negative two minus three squared. And the Y coordinates are four 
minus 1 squared. So that's going to be negative 5 squared is 25, and 3 squared is 9. So AB, the length of AB is the square root of 34. Do not put that into your calculator and round it off to a decimal. We're going to use, we're going to leave our answers as simplified radicals all year long. Get used to it. Okay, so let's find the midpoint now. Let's go ahead and find the midpoint. I'm just going to designate it like this. And remember, the midpoint formula is x of 1 plus x sub 2 over 2, comma, y sub 2 plus y sub 1, or the other way. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. All right, and so let's plug these in. So we got negative 2 plus 3 over 2, and 4 plus 1 over 2, so that's going to give us 1 half, 3 halves. So there's the midpoint of AB, well, no, 5 halves, how did I get 3? Because I subtracted, that's why. 5 halves. Okay, so that's what you're going to do for each one of the sides of that triangle. I'm going to leave that for you to do as well as the challenge problem. I'll go ahead. So why don't you go ahead and pause here. Find the length of BC and the midpoint of BC, the length of AC, midpoint of AC, and then come down here and do this challenge problem. And Turn the video back on, check your answers, and remember to take notes on the left side if you have anything we need to discuss in class tomorrow. Okay, you can see right here the length of BC, midpoint of BC, length of AC, midpoint of AC, and down here, I didn't totally work out the solution for you, but I gave you a big hint. So there is the coordinate of point D, 1, negative 5, that, well, my sketch is probably not that good. It's very important. I could see that it's going to be down here in quadrant 4. I know that from my sketch. you got to draw a good sketch, guys. It looks like it's farther over than 1, so hold on. I'm going to pause here and check my answer. Just a second. Okay, so I went back and, and just solved this the way that you would for the x-coordinate of D, and I'm still getting 1, so maybe it's just that my sketch is off. So um, double-check me on that, see if we all get 1, negative 5, and if we need to talk about this or do another example tomorrow, we'll do that. Thank you.